are you making these mistakes? Today we're gonna to talk about the five mistakes that I see all the time on therapist websites. And by not making them, you're gonna make your website a much more effective tool for connecting with potential clients. Let's dive in. Hi guys, thanks for being here today. I'm Sarah from Strong Roots Web Design, and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you find this video helpful. So today what we're gonna talk about is the five things that you must stop doing on your therapist website immediately. These are super common errors that I see all the time, and they're things that can just really undercut the effectiveness of your site, make people leave your site, make your site not as effective a tool as it can be, and as we want it to be to help you connect with potential clients. So number one on this list is putting social media icons in your header. Social media is a wonderful thing, it's a powerful tool, and it's something that we definitely want and you know encourage people to be involved in, especially if you're trying to encourage people to know about your private practice, encourage people to come to your private practice, but the time for social media is not when people get to your website because your website is your opportunity to talk to people without all of the distractions and to talk directly with the potential client. And the last thing that we want to have happen is for them to finally get to your website and then they see these bright colorful buttons that are inviting them to go to Facebook or Instagram, essentially inviting them to leave your website. And then if they click on these buttons, they end up in the world of social media where there are 10,000 distractions and casserole recipes and cat videos and you are not gonna get them back. So we don't want to prominently display social media icons at the top of your website. In fact, I suggest considering not having them at all, um, unless social media is something that's very important to you and that you put a lot of emphasis on, in which case you can put them in the footer of your website or on your contact page and still include them if that matters to you, but we don't wanna make them a super prominent thing that you see right when you get to the site because we don't want your website visitor to get distracted. So the number two thing that I would say is a major mistake that I see all the time on therapist websites is pictures of sad people. Now, this is a really understandable mistake because when you're a therapist, you work with people who come to you with their problems. And so it makes sense that when you're thinking, how am I going to show people that I understand where they're at, that I understand their struggle, I'm gonna put a picture of a person crying on my website. But even though the logic there kind of makes sense. In fact, it's a big mistake, and there are a couple of reasons for that. Let's think about it in terms of a dentist website. When you go to a website for a dentist, do you see pictures of horrible cavities and people who obviously are in a lot of pain? No, you see people smiling with their bright white teeth and that they're happy because now their teeth are well cared for. And this is just a basic principle that when we're talking to people about what you do, we want to talk to them about the end result. We want to talk to them about where you can help them get to. We don't want to emphasize and talk about through pictures what they're currently experiencing. And think about it this way. If a person is having a hard time and thinking about coming to a therapist, and then they go to a website and they see these really heartrending photos, these really dark, depressing photos. I mean, I've seen therapist websites with pictures of people in the rain with the tears and mascara running, and they're like, obviously, you know, representations of people who are just suffering so much. That is really discouraging. It's upsetting to look at. And we want people to come to your website and feel hope, right? Because we're trying to get them to do something. We're trying to get them to take action and decide to actually contact you. If you show them a lot of images that are really kind of disheartening and discouraging and make them feel worse, then they don't have any hope and they don't have any energy to actually take what is actually a fairly big step and reach out to someone that they don't know and say, hey, here's all the stuff that's really hard for me, let's talk about it. So you really, really don't wanna make that mistake. You want to show, if you have pictures of people on your website, you want to show hopeful, encouraging photos. Now, number three is another mistake that comes with photos, and we can talk about the dentist photos more here because the third mistake is having really cringy really, really fake looking photos on your website. And so if you have people on your website who are giving the thumbs up and have got these big smiles, right? That's not the kind of photo that we wanna have. We wanna have authentic looking, high quality photos. So a lot of times those photos are gonna be people who aren't looking directly at the screen, who don't look like they're posing for Instagram. Photos that are uplifting and yet 
real and that the quality is high and that they don't look like your standard run-of-the-mill really low quality stock image photo so that's a really important one to remember too and the number four thing that I would say is one of the big mistakes that I see on a lot of therapist websites is that they're not optimized for mobile devices now what does this mean in case it's not something that um, a phrase that you understand immediately basically websites nowadays have to be designed so that no matter what size screen someone is accessing on they automatically change size and all of the information on the website automatically resizes so it fits any size screen or device now if your website doesn't do this that means that it looks fine on a desktop but when you go to it on your cell phone or on your ipad it doesn't work. The images are too big, the text is too small, you have to scroll around trying to find information, and it's extremely, extremely difficult to use, and most of the time, in fact, I'd say almost 100% of the time, if your website is not optimized for mobile and someone comes to it on their mobile device, they're just gonna leave. Like, they're not gonna even bother <laughs> to try to figure out how to use it. They're just gone. They're on to the next website that came up in their Google search. And the thing that you have to realize is that nowadays, upwards of 60% of people are accessing websites through their mobile devices. So even if you think your website looks lovely on your desktop computer, if it doesn't work on mobile devices, you are losing at least, if not more, at least 60% of the people who come to your website right off the bat. And that's easy to fix, that's easy to avoid. You just wanna make sure that your website is optimized for mobile. Now the last mistake that I wanna talk about today is not having an SSL certificate. So an SSL certificate is something that you install on your website that helps the internet know that the information that's sent through your website is going where it's supposed to go. And often you can tell whether or not a website it has an SSL certificate just by looking in the search bar next to the URL, it'll have a little padlock that shows that it's secure. This is something very, very basic, but the result, if you don't have it, can be huge, which means that often search engines now, if a website doesn't have an SSL certificate, when a person clicks to go there, they'll get a big warning that says, warning, this website is not trustworthy, the people at this website might be trying to steal your information, are you sure you want to go here? Now think about what we try to do on a therapist website. We try to build trust, right? We're trying to build a feeling of connection and trust so that people can be vulnerable and reach out to you and ask for help when they need it most. So coming up to a warning that says, the people on this website might be trying to steal your information is exactly the opposite of the experience that we're trying to connect. And I can guarantee you that if people are getting that warning when they're coming to your website, they're not coming to your website at all anymore. They're leaving, they're gone. So that is a major mistake that surprisingly is not uncommon. Um, I think just because it's a technical thing that you have to know that you need to install it, but it's an easy fix. It's something you can do and it's something that will make sure that people actually come to your website safely, feel secure, and are able to access the content on your website without worrying that something wrong is happening. Have you made any of these mistakes on your website? Or are there other mistakes that you've seen on therapist websites that you think should be included in the list? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget, that if you want to keep learning, I have a free video course that you can sign up for with the link that's in the description. Thanks so much. See you soon.